So this week starts off with a little bit of concrete work. Not my favorite type of work, but work that needs to be done. I really should wait. The weather is pretty cold, but I want to get this done so I can get this compressor out back, get my airlines plumbed in, and move forward in this shop. So concrete it is. So here's the simple plywood form that I built last week. I think it's 45 inches by 45 inches. It's not a very big pad, but plenty big enough for this compressor to sit on. And all I'm going to do, level this guy up, put my rebar in it, mix up some concrete with my dad's uh, concrete mixture with some help from my son, and then try to keep this thing from freezing with a heat lamp. That's the plan anyway. So we're relatively level uh, from right to left, but from front to back, we've got probably no, not quite a quarter inch, close quarter inch slope down towards the front. That way water, we want water running away from the building, right? Not to it. So that's the idea. And I gotta fill a hole back here. It's time to mix some concrete.
forward and we'll have to pull it across there probably this way. A lot easier to pull this thing than it is to push it. not gonna work is it hmm. it's close maybe a little shoot or something won't take much to divert that in there One four. Yeah, it's gonna take a few. Alright. So to fill up this form it took five loads. Five loads in a car shawl. So five and a half, might as well say turned out really nice so far. You know, everything went pretty well. A couple of loads that I put in in the beginning were on the dry side and then a couple loads towards the end a little on the wet side. But in reality it doesn't make much difference as long as you can get a good decent finish on the top. You know, the overall strength of this compressor pad is you know, not the yeah. most important thing about it really. So it turned out pretty good. Go ahead and dump the rest of that water in that mixer. Oh, give me that trowel behind you. So I'm way too impatient to wait till the overnight temperatures are above freezing. So I went ahead and poured this little pad anyway. Decided I'd make a little temporary enclosure for it. Got a heat lamp in there. Should keep the temperature in there above freezing and keep this pad from getting any damage. That helped today. So today was a good day to do it. 
So here's what I've decided to do when it comes to mounting this air compressor on the pad out back. And I've given this some thought, and obviously I want to maintain access to the front to change oil, to change the air filter, but I also don't want to disrupt the airflow that goes through the cooler of this thing. So mounting that up against the wall or anywhere near the wall is just not a good option in my opinion. So what I'm going to do is mount this face here up against the wall. So it'll be long ways, and that gives me probably the best access to everything of any orientation on this mounting orientation to a good access to the electronics. Only downfall is the tank outlet is on this side, but I can easily plumb that up on the wall. So that's what I'm going to do. I think that's probably the best option. So I'm not expecting the best finish around the sides of this thing because the first couple loads that I put in here were a little too low a slump to drive a mix. I hope I got that right. I'm pretty sure I do. Anyway, we'll see how it turns out. Oh man, let's jack that up. Big time. That was stupid. Lesson learned. So due to the cold weather, this concrete really wasn't set up all that well. I should have waited another day before pulling this form off and I should have known better than to pull the form off the way that I did. I mean, that's just a classic mistake uh, for a beginner to make, is to pull the form off all crazy, damage the edges, which are really fragile, a lot more, easy, a lot easier to damage than what you would think. But I just mixed up you know, a little bit uh, in a bucket and troweled it back in. It wasn't set up hard enough to where, you know, it's not gonna bond, so I think it'll be fine. So there we go, that should be good enough. This is gonna get covered with gravel up to here anyway, so it ain't gonna make any difference. But it does kinda of suck to damage your work immediately. I should have been more careful removing that form, and I probably should have waited another, waited another day before doing it. But that's what you get for assuming. I assumed that it was set up enough. And it really is, but you have to be more careful than what I was. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna have a compressor sitting on it. So I've got the tubing straightener clamped to the table here. I want to show you how well this stuff cuts. I wasn't thinking it would cut near as easy as it does, but that's the supplied cutter with it. Gives you a really nice end. That's, that's nice that it cuts as easy as it does. 
So actually, I'm extremely surprised. See how well that cut? Let's run a test piece through this straightener, see how well this thing does. So there's a good bent piece. Let's run that in there. Kind of tough to push through there. But not perfectly straight. Let's uh, try to turn it 180 degrees. Turn it this way, see if that works better. Oh, hold on. So that works good that way. Go ahead and pull that, put, no, just pull it through. Yeah, that's perfectly good enough. I mean, any, any little bit we can just tweak out of it. Run it through there again. So we'll start from the down there and then come pull it up this way. All right, put it over. Uh, go back just a little more. No, we'll just go ahead and pick it up and I'll try to pull it through. Okay, grab it so it doesn't fall on the ground there. There we go. That's not bad. It's good enough. So connecting that to the tailgate worked a lot better because we had more room to work. Plus, you're not gonna drag the truck around. So I'm a big fan of the brush-on type uh, thread sealer. Just quicker and easier to deal with than you know unrolling tape off a spool. In most cases anyway. Elizabeth wanted to help me assemble these air manifolds, so she screwed them all together, gooped all the threads, and I tightened them up. I was glad to have her help.
So there's all of our manifolds made up. If you notice the fittings, they're Flexzilla, F-L-E-X-Z-I-L-L-A, -L -L high flow fittings. Let me show you the difference in between uh, one of these and your standard fitting. So these are designed to improve your flow through the coupling. You can see this is your standard fitting. See how small that opening is? And then this is the Flexzilla fitting. I really like the way that these are because you don't have to pull this ring back like you normally do. You just push it together and it locks. You do have to pull it, obviously, to make it disconnect, but it makes it quick and easy. kind of like these fittings. So I set up my grade laser on top of this shelf to shoot me a laser line around the walls on this shop in order to mount my clips for my airline good and level. You may not necessarily want it good and level. You may want water to run back to the compressor, but I've got so many drops that I don't think it's going to make much difference, really. So that's how we're going to set it up. So here's a look at the clips that come with the MaxLine air kit and they're pretty rigid they hook together so if you wanted to double back or run two lines for some reason you know they're pretty well made i'm impressed with the quality of those clips and i'm putting mine on three foot centers i started out putting them on two i'll explain it here in a second as to why i decided to change my clip layout to three a slight change of plans. That's two foot centers between clips and that's the way Ma said he'd done his and it worked out really well. Well I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for three foot between clips because it's less clips to put up and as rigid as this tubing is I don't think it'll have any problem at all with three foot between clips so I'm gonna change those to three foot instead of two. So in this master airline kit, it only came with 20 clips, if I remember correctly, per 100 foot of tubing. So they couldn't be expecting you to put it any closer than 5 foot on the center, plus any drops. So really, the clips, they could give you more in the kit. Uh, that would be one thing that, you know, wish they'd do. I don't know how, but I almost completely forgot to show you this clip. Luckily, this freezer loaded up with sharp, pokey objects slowed my fall. Cut off a good square end of this. Deburring tool. I don't know if you can see those little blades in there. Is that the right size? Yeah, I guess it is. Spin it on there. I guess that just removes that sharp. Yeah, removes that sharp edge. So when you slide this up over the fitting, it doesn't push your O rings off or damage them. Yeah, just like that. Yeah, up against the cabinet as close as you can. Yeah, right there. So, 19 foot is the center of those two. And that is 27.7. Close enough. We'll do this first one. We'll put it up there and then we'll check it. Make sure we're close enough. It ain't gotta be perfect. So I question just how needed that straightener is. You can roll this stuff out on a flat concrete floor and tweak it a little bit by hand and easily get it about as straight as the straightener will get it. But then if you 
you know, think about it, by the time you try to bend it around your conduit coming down your walls and stuff, you know, all that straightening you did, waste of time almost. So probably just as easy to not have a straightener on this tubing and just do it by hand. That's just an opinion, but that's what I gathered from messing with this stuff. That's a little too much, really. That's all right, though. I can make, it, make that work. I'm just going to push it out a little bit. Try to refine it. Maybe. So check out this pipe bender made specifically for this Max Airline. It was sent to me by Mike Stocksdale who has this exact same kit in his shop. He done an amazing job. It's so elaborate compared to mine. Um, said this was easy for him to use. I've been trying to use the conduit bender with kind of mixed results. So I'm optimistic that this thing will make my life a little easier in setting this stuff up. But let me read you the instructions that come with this thing. I think you'll uh, quickly realize where it's from after I get done reading this to you, if I can read it. Don't throw the bended wheel on the floor as to not broke it. The groove in the bended wheel and module should fit the pipes so as not to broke the surface of pipes. If the rack can't resist its former when loosening it, that is because the torsion spring lost its flexibility by tension, then change a new one. Bend the pipe slightly with hands, advance before bending pipe, and so as not as to put them into the bended wheel. When taking out the pipe, if the bended wheel can't back after pulled the rack, wrap the wheel with hand. Do not beat with hammer or barb object so as not to broke the surface of pipe, often in steel lubricating oil to the rack. It's throughout this whole thing. It's even hard for me to even read. Take out the pipe when the pipe is bended to its needed angle. Take gold of the handle with one hand. Impact the rail with another hand. Try to pull the handle and to make one side of handle and rail incline. In this case, the bended wheel will fall back, will back and fall with the rack. And then shaped pipe can be taken out easily. Bend the pipe, impact with one hand, loosen, impact, loosen the rail. Do such action again and again. Then the rack will take the bended wheel, move forward gradually so as to bend the pipe to shape. It, it's the, the whole thing. We know where it's from. Right, Tennessee. I'm just kidding. I love Tennessee. So one more thing on this bender, because I know somebody will ask. I believe it was $135 from Summit Magazine. At least that was the paperwork that was in the box when Mike sent me this. I'm sending it back to him. And it will bend over 90 degrees. This is a 90 that I bent. Check out how nice that is. Plus, you don't have the pressure drop of a 90 degree fitting there. So even if you had to buy a handful of those 90s, this would pay for itself real quick. Not to mention help you with all the other bends. So even though the con <laughs> the uh, instructions are completely useless. The tool is somewhat useful. It's not all that bad, really. It's nice for this stuff. So these are chrome-plated brass fittings, and the threads on them are just a little crunchy, kind of hard to get tight. It, the threads are dry and don't have any lubricant on them, so I used a little bit of this Blue Molly Anti-Seize. made a world of difference and allowed me to tighten these fittings up without a ton of force. Just smoothed out the operation a bit.
Got a heavy bevel on that. I broke one over in getting this one in. Yeah, that's the ticket. We use this tool pretty heavily. I was trying to do it all light. Okay, just pull it over. I'm going to use those for now but until I can get some better. Just give me a couple of them. I'm not going to put four in it, just two for now. So I'm just putting some of these uh, hardware or construction screws in it for now. I got to get the proper, better looking hardware for these. So it'll be pretty good, I think. So I'm uncertain as to how this freezer got a big dent in it, and uh, the handle got broken. It's kind of strange. Looks pretty good, I think. Well, I'm calling it here this week. I've got done as much as I had time to do. See that 90 up there in that corner? That is going to be replaced with a T, and I'm going to be running a ring of this blue tubing all the way around the shop. That way I can drop down to a manifold anywhere in here I choose in the future. Make it easy. And I think that makes the most sense, seeing as I have the tubing to make a loop. And that should improve, improve the flow as well to any fitting. So that's what I'm going to do, run a ring around through here. And it looks good. In the longer runs, it is kind of a pain to have to deal with, especially if they have any bends in it. But if you're patient, you know, it, it works out. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who supported me on this project. You guys are amazing. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Hopefully, I will see you next week. The birds fly south as the light Leaves your eyes Hold on to your dream Oh, I know you wanna scream Since the day you're born You're just a flower on your own Waiting for the sun